This paper is a DMIC paper, um, mainly because it addresses a key question uh, um, of the DMIC uh, uh, conceptual frame, which is what is the role of policy, what is the eff effect of policy, and in particular um, it addresses one um, of these substitution effects, which is the categorical, categorical substitution effect. Um, this paper, um, I think, I think needs little extra motivation if we uh, watch the daily news um, uh, about people drowning and dying in the Mediterranean Sea. This is uh, the key motivation of that paper. Why uh, do these people migrate? Why do uh, they choose that uh, uh, migratory route? And what's the role of policy? What's uh, uh, actually um, the role of asylum policy and visa policy? Heim already uh, mentioned the debate in the literature and the uh, political uh, effectiveness or migration policy effectiveness. If, sorry, that's it. Just touch the screen. Touch the screen. Like this. So, this paper contributes to a literature that is uh, rather recent, um, addressing the general migration policy effects and effectiveness. Um, or Germany uh, Perry already uh, mentioned his paper, and there are a few uh, more, uh, finding more or less uh, some effects of policies on migration flows, but the, actually the real size or the actual magnitude of the size is, is still a bit unclear. Um, a bit clearer uh, is Timothy Hatton in his paper on asylum policy, um, on, the, uh, on asylum flows. He is basically saying migration policy or asylum policy um, um, affects the variation in asylum flows by uh, about or one third, or is, uh, uh, can be assigned to migration policy um, in terms of the variation of uh, asylum flows. But still, other uh, studies by Eric Neumeyer, for example, and Eike Tielemann, they find some effects of asylum policy on the asylum flows, um, but the magnitude is still a bit unclear. But all of these papers uh, neglect more or less one uh, uh, important issue. And this is what we try to, to address here. This is the deflection effect. There is deterrence, no question about that. We, we also confirm that effect, yes. A restrictive asylum policy brings asylum uh, application numbers down. But what's the actual effect on uh, shifting migration or asylum flows to other to other uh, um, entry categories. So the key question of this paper, is there a deflection into irregularity? How does that mechanism work? So people who want to migrate and asylum seekers generally don't have other opportunities uh, in terms of entry categories, whether it's work or study or family, they are more or less stick uh, or have to stick to these uh, routes of of asylum seeking or irregular entry and stay. So people who want to migrate this route face basically uh, two policy barriers. One is the visa policy uh, barrier and another one is the asylum policy barrier. So depending whether they apply for a visa uh, in order to uh, uh, enter legally uh, a destination country or they decide against that, um, they face another uh, uh, entry barrier or stay barrier as soon as they um, reach the, the, the destination territory, which is the asylum procedure. So the question whether they apply for asylum or not, whether they overstay their travel visa or not, um, that all matters in their um, decision making, whether they migrate at all, so whether they are, not, they are deterred or not, or uh, on the actual um, migration um, Category they, they enter. So in the end, we uh, they end, uh, migrants can end up uh, in an irregular stay or uh, irregular entry and maybe an irregular stay, or they can regularize through the asylum system. So what we actually want to know: what's the role of these two types of policies in explaining the overall um, uh, migration flows uh, into the European? Union or into 29 European countries. Here we have the numbers for the 2000s in terms of asylum seekers. On the left hand side uh, you see the um, frequencies in terms of 
origin, uh, des origin countries, you see that um, most asylum seekers during the 2000s came from Eastern Europe, um, Asia, Middle East, North Africa. And interestingly, also irregular migrants, and here it's, it's, uh, the numbers uh, are based on apprehended irregular migrants, the origin uh, pattern is pretty much the same or quite similar. However, when it comes to destinations in these 29 European countries, uh, the pattern is a bit different. Whereas for asylum seekers, the main destinations are the bigger countries, France, Germany, the UK. Uh, for irregular migration, it's rather the southern European countries, uh, Greece, uh, Italy and, and Spain, which are the main destinations. And the question is, is that partly explainable by, uh, by migration policy, asylum and uh, visa policy? So we try to, to test that. We have collected uh, uh, data for 29 European destination countries um, and 180 origin countries for the period of the 2000s. Um, we run a panel uh, uh, regression uh, with a GMM estimator and for robustness checks also an LV regression. So in our estimation model looks like that. The point, oh yeah. So we estimate here both the uh, irregular uh, micro flow of, of migrants and uh, alternative also the asylum, uh, uh, the number of asylum seekers from country uh, I to country J at, in year T, explained by some uh, origin specific um, effects, some destination specific effects and bilateral effects, which also include the two types of policies, which are also bilateral. So asylum uh, 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 policy and visa policy. The operation, operationalization of these policies are as follows. We have collected a simul number of uh, refused asylum applications in first decisions and the respective asylum refusal rate and the same for visa uh, uh, refusals and visa refusal rates as our policy variables. Then, as I said, asylum applications, apprehensions of irregular migrants, data coming from Eurostat, and we control for uh, a set of origin, destination, and diet-specific variables. So what do we find here? Um, and we run this model basically for three different visa regimes for all uh, countries, or for all diets, basically, then for the, 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 the diets with a, a free visa regime, or where a visa waiver is implemented, and for those who uh, uh, which require a visa. Um, and we test three different types of policy. Uh, indicators, the visa rejections here in terms of the numbers, visa refusals, the visa dummy here, which is the second one, and the number of refused visas. What do we find? Number one, a 10% increase in the asylum refusal decreases the asylum flow by about 0.7 to 0.8%. And, uh, respectively, a 10% uh, 10 percentage point increase in the asylum refusal rate and the average asylum refusal rate is about 75% uh, across the 29 uh, European countries, bilateral refusal rate, right? Uh, so by origin. Uh, so if that is hypothetically increased by 10 percentage points, it um, would reduce the uh, number of asylum applications by about 1.4%. What we also find is a general visa requirement um, is associated to 50% lower uh, uh, um, asylum flows. So a visa requirement in general uh, seems to be somehow correlated or maybe even causes uh, uh, lower asylum inflows. However, for those corridors where a visa is required, if ref visas are increasingly refused, that actually increases slightly the number of asylum applications. So a 10% increase in visa refusals uh, increase asylum applications by about 0.3%. What does this imply? It seems that at least a few of the refused uh, um, visa applicants are turning um, to an irregular uh, uh, migration strategy. So they need, of course, to enter the country uh, irregularly and then claim asylum. Um, it might also imply that a high ref visa refusal rate signals to others that they uh, uh, choose the asylum uh, um, or the irregular entry uh, route uh, uh, straight away. 
When we look at the numbers um, for, of irregular migrants, we find the following. A 10% increase in asylum refusals increased irregular migration by about 3.1%. Uh, so there seems to be really a, a, a deflection effect going on from um, uh, asylum or rejected asylum seekers to uh, uh, um, people turning to irregular uh, entry or stay policies, either through um, you know, uh, a kind of signaling effect for, for, for other potential asylum seekers or that actually the rejected asylum seekers, they, they stay um, illegally. Uh, second, again, number of irregular migrants um, is about 50% lower in visa constraint corridors, so we see the same uh, 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 similar uh, magnitude uh, uh, um, in terms of irregular migration uh, flows uh, as we see for asylum application uh, numbers. And um, for visa, when you only look at the visa constraint corridors, we find that visa refusals, again, increase irregular migration. A 10% increase in visa refusals increase ir irregular migration by about 5.4%. So this effect is even slightly stronger than the effect of restrictive asylum policy. To conclude, what we find is visa requirement as such, so visa restricted, uh, uh, visa restricted uh, corridor is associated with lower numbers in both asylum uh, uh, um, applications and irregular migrants. And here I must say apprehended irregular migrants. Um, second, asylum refusals decrease the number of uh, uh, future asylum applications, but also increase the number of irregular migrants. And, uh, and finally, visa refusals increase the number of asylum applications but even more the number of irregular migrants. So there seems to be that this deterrence effect, which we also find and which the literature, I think, is, is quite clear about it, is somehow counterbalanced by a mechanism or a dynamic uh, of, uh, of a deflection into irregularity. So these are somehow side effects that need to be taken into account when you think about policy effects of course, there's another important effect which we haven't really taken into account, which is the spatial dimension and the spatial deflections. To what extent are uh, as, <coughs> sorry, asylum seekers or irreg potential irregular migrants uh, um, shifted to other destinations, possibly more liberal uh, uh, destinations? That's something we haven't really uh, been able to incorporate in this analysis, but it sh it's definitely something we should look at in, in, in future uh, 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 research projects. Thank you very much.